This is a presentation of OPC systems, OPC WPF lamp and switch controls. The lamp and switch controls are part of a series of controls designed for WPF applications. The lamp and switch controls can be used to create applications quickly and easily incorporate realistic looking controls in your WPF applications. The controls are intended for use with the .NET 4.0 framework. There are four switch controls that are styled from the OPC system's checkbox control and one button that is styled from the OPC button control. There are also three lamp variations that are styled from the OPC system's content control. There are multiple properties that can be controlled by live data from OPC system service, such as opacity, enabled, foreground, border, and background color, flashing, and others. The styles can be edited to suit your own needs, or you can create your own styles based on any of the OPC system's controls and WPF. Let's take a look at each of the controls starting with the switches. We've opened our application now in Expressions Blend 4.0. We're going to take a look at the properties of these switches. There are four switches that are based off of the checkbox control. And that would be the OPC WPF toggle button power, the OPC WPF button rotary, the OPC WPF button toggle switch, and the OPC WPF button toggle one. Let's take a look at the properties of the OPC button rotary. All of these switches have the same properties. So if we look at one, we're going to be looking at the same properties for all of them. But the primary properties that you're going to want to look at are first the brushes. We can adjust the background color, which gives us a look and feel of the background of the switch. And then the border brush. The border brush is the area surrounding the actual switch. So we can see that that's changing there. We can change that color to whatever we feel like. The next thing we're going to want to look at is the common properties of the OPC systems. In there we have our is checked tag. And this will control whether the button appears to be checked or unchecked. And that is the state that we have styled this on. Here we have our pump value that is controlling the is check state of that button. So if we go back up to our common properties, we can see the is check state is unchecked. And if we check that, you will see that it actually changes the state of the button. You can also see the animation here. So back in our common properties, the is check tag controls the look and position of that switch. Under the content OPC systems, we also have the pump value used there and that is controlling the content of the switch. So when the is check state is false, we will display motor off above the switch, or when the is check state is true, then we will display the motor on above the switch. The location of that text is controlled by the layout properties. So if we go back up to our layout, and expand the layout, we will see that it is defined as the horizontal is centered, and the vertical content is at the top. So if we change that to bottom, you'll see that that moved down to the bottom, or the center, or the top. Now let's take a look at the set value OPC systems properties. So under set value, we're again using our pump value. We're going to set the value boolean to true, and then the set data type is logical discrete. So when we click on that, we will set is checked property to true, or fault based on our mouse click on the switch. Those are the base properties that we're mainly concerned with. Now the extended properties that we're going to take a look at next are the brush properties for the OPC systems control. And you'll see here that we can, based off of an OPC systems tag, change the background colors here. We can also have a flashing for the background. Do the same with the border brush and also the foreground brush. So we have options here to change the color, the look and feel of that switch based on OPC systems tags. We also have the other properties which are common to all OPC systems controls which are the transform. So you can rotate, skew, scale, translate, all of that's capable through OPC systems tags. So those properties are common to all four of these switches. Let's take a look at one of our lamp controls. Now the lamp is based off of the basic OPC system content control and a style from that. 
So if we go up, we can take a look at our properties here and we have the background and the border brush and the foreground brush that we can affect through our standard setup. And we'll see right now we're looking at the border brush and we're changing the actual border around that lamp control. Now if we take a look at our background, we can also change the appearance of that background to anything that we like. You can see now we've got it a bright green or we can go with blue, any colors that you care to choose. That uh, is completely customizable, not only through our brushes property, but through the OPC systems brush properties. So we have our content and this is the standard common properties. The content right now is OPC lamp raised, which is the name of the control. And we can also affect the enable property based on OPC systems control. So let's take a look at what happens when we uncheck the enable property. You can see that its opacity, it's dropped to about 50% to give you a visual look and feel of uh, being disabled. Under the brushes OPC systems, we're using the background flash tag of the pump value. And we're gonna do the background flash on transition to true. And then the background color tag is based off of the pump value also. We can also affect the border brush and the foreground brush just the same as with the switch controls. And then let's come down to the common properties of the OPC systems. We have an is enabled tag which will give us that enabled disabled appearance to our lamp control. And we have the tooltip tag and we can also affect the content of our lamp control. And here we're affecting the content based off the pump value. To get these tags, it's easy. Just select the ellipse to the right, select local, and then scroll down to the particular tag and select that and hit OK. Now for this lamp control, we are basing that off of the pump value. So if it's fault, we're putting the content up here of motor stopped, or if it's true, we're saying that the motor's running. And again, as with all the other controls, we have our transforms from the OPC systems tags. And let's take a look at our button control. This is based off the OPC WPF button, and this one is named is OPC WPF button push for the specific style. And we can see that we have the same background, border brush, and foreground properties that we can affect here. And also the layout and the common properties is uh, the content that we're concerned with. We can also enable and disable this control. So if we look at the disabled property, you can see again that its opacity is set to about 50%. Now if we come down to our brushes, we can also see that we can affect the background and the foreground and the border brush. And then under common properties, we're going to use the is enabled tag here and we will enable and disable this based on the pump value and is enabled is set to on true. The content tag we're not using at this point but we can have a content tag here that will place content up here based on an OPC systems tag. And we're going to use the set value on this to set the mixer value and we're going to set that to false. And the reason for that is we're using a logical discrete and we're just going to set that to false whereas our set alarm button over here that we're using is set to true. So here we're using two different buttons, one to set the tag to true and one to set the tag to false. And again, we have our transforms. So let's take a look at our application and run it. I'm gonna go up to project and run project. And I'm just gonna minimize our development environment here. And here we have our project that's open and running and we'll expand that with a little rollout. And we can see we have our power button here. We can turn that off, turn it on. Our e-stop is also affected by the power on and power off. So if we have the power on and we hit the e-stop, that's turning the power off. We have our motor starter and we're set at run right now and our indicator is telling us that the motor is running. So I'm going to set that to stop. We're displaying motor stop and our lamp here has changed color. And we have a stop drive toggle button here. And we're going to hit that. And it shows that our drive is stopped. Notice also that our buttons down here are grayed out. These are grayed out because we used the is enabled tag. And what we did was we based that is enabled tag on the motor starter here. So now if we turn that motor on, we'll see that the buttons are enabled. If we turn it off, we see that they're off. So let's turn that back on. We have our motor running. We have a flashing indication to show that it's starting up. Our drive is stopped. Let's start the drive. Notice the flashing indication here also. And I'm going to set an alarm. 
Now we have our flashing stripes that are showing up in the background of the drive running. We also have our alarm active indication over here. And I'm going to clear that alarm. Notice no alarm is displayed here and then we have a green indicator here and our drive running. So if we turn our drive off, we go to blue, we turn our motor off, we change the color of the motor indicator to a, a light red, and then all of our buttons down here are disabled. So if we turn the power on, we see our e-stop changing. We'll roll up our application and we'll shut it down. For more information on OPC Systems products and features, please visit our website at www.opcsystems.com. And for more training videos, please select the Training tab at the top of the page.